We're the Lockwoods, and we're traveling the world to experience up close and in person all the natural wonders and distinct cultures that our kids would otherwise be consuming only through textbooks and TV. After sweating our way through countless tropical destinations across the globe this year, we decided to break out the long sleeves and brave some chilly December weather to experience the world-famous outdoor Christmas markets of Europe. We're working our way from Italy, through France, and into Germany to find our fill of festive goods, grub, and groovine, and to see which Yuletide village really gets our sleigh off the ground. Let's start devouring. We are at Piazza Santa Croce in Florence, Italy, and behind me is a neo-Gothic basilica that was built in mid-1800s. But we're not here for that, we're here for the Christmas market, Vine Arcs Market, and it's been a tradition in Florence for over 500 years. And as you can see, it's raining. So the whole piazza is full of stalls that are Christmas themed with either some food, some treats, some candy, mulled wine, and of course little souvenirs and trinkets if you want to get an ornament for your tree. Lots and lots of candy. Kids couldn't resist and we wanted to get them a little treat. I bought it, Heather. <laughs> Hold okay. that real tight, babe. There we go. <laughs> That's a chore. Red is my kid's color. Yummy, yummy, yeah, yummy, yummy. I have a heart. Learn how to eat licorice. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's so sweet. I'm gonna have a bite. Ow, you squeezed my finger. I thought it was real. <laughs> I thought it, I really bit his finger when he said that. Can I have a little bite? Yeah. Oh man, Haribo knows how to make candy. <laughs> and we're still in Italy, but we've gone from Florence up to Milan for our second Christmas market. And this one is called the Piazza Duomo Market, and it's right here in the shadow of Duomo, or the big cathedral that's the trademark for the city. Also happens to be in the shadow of the Galleria Shopping District. And this one is definitely, I would say, a step up from what we experienced in Florence. It looks like more permanent structures. It's not big yet, so I know we've got big things to come, but let's see what they've got in this market that maybe puts it just a step above what we experienced in Florence. And since it's one row, it's a little bit misleading because it seems like it's smaller than it really is. It goes almost all the way around the Duomo, which is a lot of stalls. And we're gonna find some things to take home and have some bites to eat tonight. For dinner, we're getting it at the Christmas market. Mmm, that is good type. Dear salami. Ah, oh, dear, gracias. Dear. Dear salami. Dear, dear salami. Ooh. Where are you from? Uh, USA, Colorado. Where? Colorado. Hey, USA. Okay, the total is 24, okay? Well, that was lots of fun. We got some salumi, some deer salumi, and some cheese, and the kids ran ahead of me, and they told me that there's more cheese we have to get up here. It's right here. It's right here. Please, 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 please try the champagne flavored cheese. You want to try the champagne? Yes. Uh, can I try the champagne? Mmm, that's delicious. Truffle? Truffle. Mmm. Like when you're trying Brooklyn, do you like it? Yeah. Oh my gosh, truffle, it's, it's so good. Everybody wants the truffle. We're going with the truffle. Can I have a kiss? Thank you. Ciao, grazie. Ciao, grazie. Well, it's all so festive and beautiful. We love how it wraps around the Duomo. But we got our loot, and now we're ready to go taste it all, and we are going to see you at our next Christmas market stop. We are in Paris, and we are lucky enough to be staying right across the street at Hotel Regina. We got that through our Inspirato connections, and if you want to learn more about that, go to followabc.com slash pass, because we're not paying any nightly rates. Now, we are at the liveliest and biggest Christmas market in Paris. It's Tuileries Gardens, the, right next to the Louvre. Gorgeous, gorgeous area, District 1 in Paris. Has more than 100 wooden style chalets, but it looks more like a carnival than a market. It's a very chilly night out here, and so we're gonna start off with something to kind of warm us up from the inside and our hands. This place sells hot wine and hot chocolates that are spiked with amazing boozes. It's called Atelier du Vin Chaud. Yeah. Bonjour! Uh. It's like coffee. That's the best part. Cheers. I've heard about this so much. This is our first time having mulled wine. Is really what it is, but they call it de vinchard, which is hot wine. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. It smells like apple cider wine. Mm. 
Oh, this is perfect to walk around with. You want a tiny sip? The one I got has uh, very little alcohol in it. It's a uh, sherry, mold sherry. Ooh, it smells like apple cider. It does. It tastes like apple cider. It does, huh? Yeah. Of course, Phil got one a little stronger. And they got a large, but mostly so that it can hold both of my hands. It doesn't really have much in the way of spices at all. It just tastes kind of like wine. I'm sure there's a little bit of uh, cinnamon. And I think that's about all I can really pick up. But it's delicious. It's better than I thought. I thought it was going to be too spicy. And I wasn't in the mood for that. So this is really hitting the spot. This is bumper to bumper traffic and it's really hard not to spill our wine. And I'm nervous about it because it's red. It's a stain for sure. Oh, uh, look at all the cheese they're putting on top of the potatoes. Oh, it looks so good. I see a lot of potatoes here. And even in Italy, we saw those little ringlets of the potatoes. And I think they're called potato tornadoes. It seems to be a theme of the Christmas markets too. I still want to go on that giant behemoth. I love his vocabulary. <laughs> behemoth, yeah. It seems like all of the food carts and drink carts are at the front at the very beginning closer to the Louvre area and as you walk further down it becomes more and more like games and now carnivals and now we're getting at the area where they're right. The crowds here are absolutely nuts. I don't know if I've ever seen anything like this. It's like when a, an arena football game or a concert lets out and everybody's trying to get out of the door at the same time. It's, that's, that's the part right here. Disney has nothing on this. Let's go to, let's go to Euro Disney so we can spread out. <laughs> this is here year round. Whether there is a Christmas market or not, it is the Ferris wheel right by the Louvre. It's another iconic little landmark in Paris. It's not little. <laughs> I hope they have heaters in there. Doubt it. Oh, this is gonna be gorgeous. This is the perfect time to do it. It's, uh, let's see what time it is. It's like 4.40, so the sun is just starting to go down over there. And it's uh, it's kind of going down right by the side of the Eiffel Tower, too. So, Ooh, I wanna get in there now. This is about the best aerial view that we can get of the whole place because we're not taking the drone out right now. So this is even better, honestly. I agree, little known fact. I have vertigo, I get very dizzy in heights, but it's worth it to come up here. Really, really recommend doing this when you come to Paris. It's such a gorgeous, gorgeous way to see so many of the landmarks and at sunset could be. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that wasn't so bad. That was really pretty. And it was clean in there, too. Are you surprised we survived? <laughs> no, I'm not surprised. All right, let's get the kids some churros. One Nutella, lots of sugar. Cole got the Nutella one, and Brooklyn got the sugar. And when they said sugar, holy smokes. That is a lot of sugar. No, it's just plain sugar. Mmm, <laughs> they're warm. I definitely get the carnival side of this because it's exactly what this particular Christmas market feels like. It's very much like a fair. A lot of rides. I did take your churro, is that okay? I took one of your 12 churros. So if you're looking for something that's not so much Christmas ornaments and Christmas decor, but just hanging out, having a lot of fair kind of food, and riding on some rides. This would be a good one for you. I'm looking forward to our next stop though. And definitely, and definitely get churros. As you can see, the weather is getting increasingly chilly. You can't even see my beautiful Christmas sweater because we are in Germany and it's about 20 degrees here. But we wanted to come here because this is where it all began in the 1300s. Christmas markets really weren't a well-known tradition until recently, the past couple of decades, they started spreading even into North America. But you don't realize so many of our traditional Christmas practices, decorations, songs even, originated in Germany. And we're here in Munich. This is the Munich Christmas market or the Munchner Christkindlmarkt. By the way, I'm hacking German because I have no idea how to say it. But this is the original Christmas market in Munich. The name Kris Kringle came from Germany. It actually translates to Christ Child. And it all takes place right here in the Marienplatz main square, right under the shadow of the St. Peter's Church. A lot of people come to the markets to check out the decorations and the ornaments. 
Even the Christmas tree was originated in Germany. They were the first to think to bring a tree inside the home. Kris Kringle was the man that came and put presents under the tree on the 24th. And the Santa Claus that we know in the US and worldwide as the man in the red suit, Big Jolly, that came from a German illustrator. We can bake some cinnamon cookies with this cookie cutter. Was it reindeer? It's a reindeer. The market's really long, we're not even in the heart of it yet, but this area is called the Old Town or the Old Square, and it's where you're gonna find more of a traditional, historical buildings, churches, like St. Peter's Church over here. So as you go, you're gonna find that even the stores are gonna go from more modern to a bit more traditional. It's already time to warm up, and we're gonna try something different from the blue vine that we had at the last stop, and we're gonna do cramambouli. So we pick a wine or one of the juices of apple or berries, and the wines are available in red, white, and rosé. And then for any of these, if you want to add additional shots, you can. So Erin and I are going to get a red, Kramambuli red, so red wine, and we're going to add rum. And then the kids will have, let's do one hot apple and one hot berries. And those are alcohol free unless you add stuff to them. All right, Brooklyn. Oh wait, sorry. <laughs> so that's the rum. All right. Here you go, bud. You got that? That's gonna warm your hands up, right? Yeah. And then Brooklyn. So that's berries. You can put your other hand on it. It'll keep you nice and warm. Okay. That warm you up? So good. I like the tiniest of ever. We also so look at these amazing little mugs. They're very cool. We also got these three chips. When we return the three chips and the three mugs, we get 12 euro back. And I said, why do we need the chips? Why can't we just return the mugs? And she said, because a lot of people would go around stealing mugs from people and then turning them in for money. So you have to have the chips to prove you bought it. it smells delicious. It's a lot stronger than the Groovine we had. That's the rum. Oh, it's a lot more tasty too. Here, try it, baby. The mug really tricks the eye because it looks like a frosted glass. So I almost expect it to be cold, but it's very warm. Ooh, yeah. That is much more like a cocktail, I'd say. A lot more rummy. That'll warm you up. I think it's hotter than the, the other mulled wine we had, too. Let's keep walking, but I love that we got this drink. We're gonna move on and do some food, too, because we wanna experience this market the way that we experience our other travels and do it through the food. Blue vine, amateur hour. <laughs> Literally every single time you take a sip after you get cold again, you will warm up entirely. It'll be like like fire in your organs. Gotta get our 12 euro back. Christmas song, that is my favorite Christmas song. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. I have actually never had a roasted chestnut before and it is a very, very traditional snack to have at one of these markets. And the smell, you know what's funny? I would have thought that it would have this amazing smell. It actually smells uh, like a, it's like a burnt uh, charcoal, almost aroma that it has. So I'm very intrigued as to what the taste is gonna be like. Danke. Already I know why they're so popular, because they keep your hands very, very warm. It feels so good to hold. And I'm really surprised that she was able to use her bare hands to move them around, because you can tell how hot they are. Oh, they're so warm. <laughs> you crack it open like a pistachio. It kind of looks like a walnut. Yeah, it does look like a walnut. Should you yeah. bite into it? Yep. Is it going to be too hot? No. <laughs> it has like a sugary taste. I want to try it now. Mmm. Really soft. Look at the steam coming out of it. I think it tastes like tea, but really soft. I don't get the sugar. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. I'm going to munch on these and look around for more things to eat. At least they'll keep my hands warm. Yeah, this one's even softer. The reason that I'm like cracking it open is because I have a big fear of spiders being in the middle since I since I bit into a peach and then I decided I want to cut it open. I cut it open and went, I sliced right through the middle. When I opened it, there's like a giant slug, black slug, that had like tentacles and thingies. That is a 100% true story, the thing of nightmares, and I really wish she didn't remember it. <gasps> Can I get the chocolate spoon? <gasps> wait, 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 Daddy. I yeah. really, really want the chocolate and white chocolate guitar. Time for chocolate. German chocolate is known as being a bit sweeter, and that's why a lot of people love it. 
But look at these. Look at the shapes they have. Tools and cars. There's a lighter down there. Nuts and bolts. There's lipstick, guitars. There's even pianos here. And look how real and rustic they made the hammer and nuts and bolts look. All right, Colt, do you want yours? Of course I do. All right, I'll grab it. Is it hot? It's hard. It's like rock solid. <laughs> That'd be funny if this isn't chocolate at all. It's so, so far. <laughs> <laughs> if it's soap, <laughs> it's not chocolate at all. This is theater. <laughs> what are they? It's chocolate. It's soap. Wait, what? <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah, let me try it. Let me try it. Wait. Mine's not. That's chocolate. <laughs> That's a close call. <laughs> Delicious, the best. Can we get some? These are literally so good. Mm -hmm. Dried apple chips. You know what it tastes like? It tastes so good. It's got a lot of. <laughs> you know what that tastes like? It tastes like um, dried or, or dehydrated apple cider. And then when you chew it and you know mix it with your saliva, and it liquefies. They're spiced, yeah. All right, it's really chilly and we're trying to warm up our hands again. Uh, so we're having a little bit more Groovine. And this is true Groovine this time, and it is called a Mitschus, which means with shot. So this one has a shot of rum. It's very similar to what we had before. It's delicious. There's one more level of this. It's Feuerzangambola, and that's when they take a sugar loaf, flaming on top, and let it drip into it. If you don't know what a sugar loaf is, it's the same thing as a sugar cube, but just in a different shape, in a cone shape. Um, so it's kind of like, uh, what is that drink, babe? Absinthe. It's like the ritual of absinthe, where you just take the, the flaming sugar on top of the drink, let it drip into it, and then you enjoy. But that's not this one. This really makes it all worthwhile. Hey, I'm B. I'm C. And we're pros. Please follow our gaming channel at B and C Pros. All done. Let's hit it. You know what? We have flown through Germany so many times. This is the first time as a family we've stepped outside of the airport. Every time we come to Germany, all I want are like Frankfurters. Those really, the long, skinny, uh, hot dog looking sausages. Six types of sausages. Six this types, one okay. is the classic one, one, the one. traditional sausage. And this one is very special. It's a Kris Kringle sausage. I have to get the Kris Kringle one. And the it's a special German sausage. Ah, oh, smells too. wonderful. It does, it smells like it's like a spiced cake. I'm actually starving. No matter how many little sweet snacks you have and Drew wines, Drew vines, you gotta have some food. And this one is a combination of beef and pork and mustard and dark beer, and it looks delicious. Mmm. Mmm. It's really delicious. Yes, there's a lot of bun there. And some people have a problem with that. They're like, too much bread, too much bun. I love bread, I love buns. So this is delicious to me. And it's really good mustard. Did you know that the very famous popular well-loved song, Silent Night, was composed by a German-speaking Austrian. So, another thing that came from here. I'm making a wish. All right, we have to try this traditional German Christmas market, this food, which is a uh, Nuremberg Elisa Lisku. Elise Kippu. Elise <sighs> What he said. <laughs> <laughs> we do that. And Brooklyn, which one do you want? Snowman. Snowman? Snowman and one of this. It has like paper slash, I don't know what it is. You can eat that. You eat that. Yes. Ah, it tastes like, I feel like there's like, it's like a peanut chocolate cookie. I got the traditional snowman cookie. It's very traditional. Is that hard? Very. I want to try this gingerbread. Nuremberg. It's not actually gingerbread, but it does taste like it. Because it has so many of the same spices in it. And it's soft. It's a little bit like the texture of uh, Probably a fruitcake. And then the piece on the bottom, it looks like paper. Really dry, hard frosting, I think. It's really good. You get some almond flavor in there, although maybe that's just in my head because of the almond on there. But it's good. Oh yeah, it's trippy. That paper is trippy because it actually has a texture paper. Speaking of gingerbread, that is another thing I believe originated in Germany that we use today as a Christmas celebration. All right, let's go. Let's go. It's getting darker. With all the different countries we go to, I feel like there is like one specific food they do better than anyone else. Like the Philippines has the best mangoes ever. And in Germany, it's potatoes. 
they make the best potatoes, like whatever it is, if it's mashed potatoes or scalloped or whatever it is. So we are getting a little potato evening and I have to ask him how to pronounce it. Riverdachi. Um, one portion. One portion. So it's called Riverdachi and they're they're like boiled, fried in the sauce there. It so smells good. so good. Ah, they're warm because they came right out of the fryer. Oh, it's so good. So it's a potato, but it looks kind of like a bread. And you dip it in the applesauce. Mmm. It's like the best hash brown. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Warm. Oh yeah. Oh, look at that heat coming out of it. Mmm. This will warm you up too. Oh my god, I love it. Mmm. My favorite thing that we've had now. Now time for everyone's favorite winter sport, which has been a hobby here in Germany since the 15th century. And I have a very special connection to it. It's ice skating! I actually grew up as a competitive ice skater and my first international competition was in Chemnitz, Germany. And so that was the first time I ever left the US and the first time I ever felt like I really traveled was to Germany. So it is special in my heart. Hi! 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 They didn't have any figure skates in my size, so I have to be in hockey skates. What a great Germany experience, and coming here to Munich I think was the right choice. So many wonderful Christmas markets throughout Europe. I'm so glad that we went to the ones we did. It really puts Christmas and the whole holiday spirit in a different perspective. I'm glad that we got to give our kids this perspective and that's what it's all about when you travel is you're seeing the world from different eyes and they're your own eyes. It's pretty magical. So please keep following us along on our next adventure, our next journey. We're going back to Southeast Asia soon so we will see you there. <laughs> I can't stop because there's no toe pick. We're the Lockwoods. Aaron, Phil, Reagan, Brooklyn, and Cole. We're traveling the world to experience, up close and in person, all the natural wonders and distinct cultures that our kids would otherwise be consuming only through textbooks and TV. We think it's a better way to learn, and we're working hard to fund this little experiment in the hope that our kids will grow up wiser, kinder, and more grateful for the beauty of our diverse planet and its people. Christmas, where's the light shining down? Christmas, and you light up the town. Good afternoon. <laughs>